numbered, numbered among apostles. For he was a good man filled with the Holy Spirit and with faith. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes, friends. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, it is a memorial of St. Barnabas, who was an apostle, who was also a missionary. We too we have been called as Christians to follow his footsteps. We are called by, by the virtue of being Christians to be missionary. Let us start this missionary activity, this missionary task from our family. And let us in this Mass ask God to give us that necessary grace to carry on with the work He has entrusted to us. In this Mass, let us pray for the souls of Monica Njerikimani and Wajiro and Father Donatus Mabengi, that their soul may rest in peace. Dear brethren, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. I confess to mighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask that you may live abiding all the angels and saints, and to my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who decreed that Saint Barnabas, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, should be set apart to convert the nations. Grant that the gospel of Christ may be preached, may be fully proclaimed by word and by deed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, a great number that believed turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he was glad and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a large company was added to the Lord. So Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had, he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year, they met with the church and taught a large company of people. And in Antioch, the disciples were for the first time called Christians. Now, in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called the Niger, Ruchius of Cyrene, Manaen, a member of the court of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them 
and send them off. The word of the Lord. The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. The Lord has shown his salvation, his deliverance to the nations. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has shown his deliverance to the nations. He has remembered his merciful love and his truth for the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing out your praises. Sing psalms to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Raise a shout before the King, the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Go and make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. I'm with you always to the close of the age. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Preach as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cross lepers, cast out demons. You receive without pay, give without pay. Take no gold, no silver, no copper in your belt no bag for your journey, no two tunics, no sandals, no other stuff. For the laborer deserves his food. And whatever town or village you enter, find, find out who is worthy in it. And stay with him until you depart. As you enter the house, salute it. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear people of God, you know both readings, the first reading and the Gospel the theme of mission comes out strongly. We read in the first reading that the Holy Spirit told the Christian community at Antioch, I want Barnabas and Saul be set aside to which I have called to go and accomplish the work that I have called them. In the gospel, the Lord instructs the disciple. As you go, proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You have received without charge, give without charge. 
Indeed, the mission is very urgent. That's why Christ is telling them, travel lightly, fast and far. They should not carry gold, nor silver, nor copper, nor pass, so that they may be light. Today we are celebrating the feast of St. Barnabas. His life reminds us that being a missionary is an intrinsic dimension of the church. It is the people who are the most important at the end of the day. They are sold to be saved. The gauge of a successful missionary is not how many churches will build, how many communities will be established, how many members will be recruited, how many fund will be corrected, but it is how we treat people, how we'll help them to grow, to mature in their faith, to live a deep Christian life, to be full of joy of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, the goal of a mission is to change life, to touch lives, to help people to live their life with great passion, zeal, meaning, and purpose through a transformed life of Christ. For this reason, although Barnabas was a very missionary-minded, person. He was more concerned also for those who he worked with, the community. He, the word Barnabas means the son of encouragement. And Barnabas built the Christian community through his constant encouragement. He not only was he the source of encouragement to the community, but also it was very encouraging, encouragement towards his collaborator, his colleague, the apostle. We read that when one wanted Saul, uh, we read that no one wanted Saul because they were suspicious of his past. He was a persecutor of the church. But it was Barnabas who saw the goodness and potential in Saul. He was able to see that goodness even in the weakness of people. Hence, with courage, Barnabas left and he went looking for Paul, Saul. Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. And he stayed with Saul for one year instructing a number of people. Barnabas never gave up on people no matter how hopeless or unliable they were. He always believed in the goodness of every person. And this outlook of Barnabas in his dealing with people was not just manifested in Saul to join him in the mission, but later in accepting John Mark as a collaborator. In fact, Paul did not like John Mark because he failed them in their first mission. So he considered that his soul, or Paul, he considered John Mark as unliable and irresponsible for breaking the journey in their first mission. It was Barnabas who sought to give John Mark a second chance. And because of that, they disagreed and parted ways. Paul taking Silas in a missionary trip to Celia, and Paul and Barnabas taking John Mark with him to spread the gospel to Cyprus. And that's where Barnabas met his death. Barnabas was a person with good heart. That's why Luke described him as a good man filled with the Holy Spirit and with faith. 
It was because of his goodness that a large number of people were won over to the Lord. He was also a generous person. His generosity was not only in kind, but also in love, in compassion, and empathy to those who are rejected by others. He never lost faith in people, even though whom other has given up on them. So, what can we learn from the life of St. Barnabas? First, he knew that the task of the apostle was not just proclaiming the word, but also doing good deeds. That's why in the gospel we hear Christ instructing his apostle. When you go, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. We too, as Christians, we are called to do the same. To heal those who are vulnerable. Second, Barnabas showed us an example of an actively maintained faith-based lifestyle. And this, you know, we have that tendency of putting God attends gradually on the sideline. The only way on how to compact this tendency is to live our faith without compromise. We can only do this if we stand together and encourage one another to live out our Christian belief in an increasingly, increasingly ambivalent and even hostile environment. We need the constant support of one another to do this. We need to develop, to, to develop lively faith communities that will encourage and support all those who want to live out their faith. That St. Barnabas showed us an example of giving another a second chance. Saul, as a persecutor, was invited to the Christian community by Barnabas. John Mark was given also a second chance by Barnabas. Let us imitate Barnabas. By also giving other people a second chance, even when they have committed a mistake. At the end, Vatican II document, Argentes number two says, that the church on earth is by its very nature a missionary. Therefore, we can say that to be a missionary is part and parcel of being a Christian. It is because Christ was sent by the Father, so we too, we are sent by Christ. Let us all be missionary. Let us follow the example of this great man, St. Barnabas. But by giving ourselves totally to Christ without counting the costs. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the mighty Father. Sanctify with your blessing, we pray, O Lord the offerings presented here, so that by your grace they may set us on fire with the frame of your love, by which St. Barnabas brought the light of the gospel to the nation, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is true, right and just to our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundation, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages and end, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy,
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this mystery. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving new thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new internal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the blood, by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an internal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Barabbas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we lie for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, John Tando, Jew, and David, our bishops, the order of bishops and all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, Father Donatus Mathenge, Monica Jerry Kemani, Nanwanjiro Gaturu, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his, in their baptism, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body to our departed to our other departed brothers and sisters too and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever with them the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you are God as you are, 
We shall be like you for all ages and praise you without end. Through Christ Jesus our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, what is heaven, glory in the heaven, thy kingdom come, I will be now and have this is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distance as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, bear with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God, bless 
and protect you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And all those who are called Barnabas, how a, a good feast day. And to, you, to us all, have a blessed day.